In a world where the only constant is change, Robert Kiyosaki stands as a beacon of unconventional wisdom, challenging us to rethink what it means to be financially successful. Imagine a reality where traditional saving strategies and the dream of a stable job are no longer the safe havens they once were. This is the backdrop against which Kiyosaki paints his groundbreaking financial principles. He invites us on a journey to question everything we've been taught about money, debt, and the path to wealth. So in today's video, we're embarking on a transformative experience that challenges the core of our financial beliefs. We will uncover the secrets that have propelled Kiyosaki to the forefront of financial mastery and how you can apply these lessons to redefine your own financial destiny in 2024. So what are you required to do to get rich in 2024? Well, it's simple. Number four, rewire your brain. Kiyosaki urges us to ditch the old school thinking around pensions and medical benefits. In today's fast paced world, adaptability is critical and it all starts with your mindset. It's the driving force behind your life choices, actions, and ultimately your contributions to the world. The reality is that many of us are shackled by limiting beliefs often rooted in societal norms or personal experiences. These mental blocks act as invisible handcuffs, preventing us from reaching our financial peak. Kiyosaki challenges us to shift our focus towards creating assets and fostering positive cash flow. Sure, it sounds intimidating, but it's a game changer. This shift paves the way for financial independence and ensures long-term security. Remember, our brains are not set in stone. They're adaptable, moldable, and ready for change. And well, this transformative mindset goes beyond mere financial literacy. Kiyosaki's approach isn't just about learning new financial strategies. It's about unlearning the old ones that hold us back. He urges us to question the status quo, to look beyond the traditional job security and retirement plans, and to see every economic change as an opportunity for growth. And how do you do this? To rewire our brains in this way, Kiyosaki suggests a proactive approach to continuous learning. This includes educating ourselves about market trends, investment opportunities, and the evolving nature of assets and liabilities. This shift in thinking is what enables us to move from a mindset of earning and saving to one of investing and creating wealth. With the right mindset, the sky's the limit. Number three, use debt to get ahead. The reality is that anyone can get rich. That's the core belief of Robert T. Kiyosaki. For over 25 years, he's been challenging conventional financial wisdom, pushing us to rethink our approach to wealth. Now, Kiyosaki throws a curveball. Debt can be your ally in the quest for financial growth. Yes, you heard that right. But he's quick to draw a line between good and bad debt, a distinction that could make or break your financial journey. Let's face it, most of us are playing by the old financial playbook. Save diligently, land a stable job, buy a house, and spread your investments across stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. Sounds familiar, right? But according to Kiyosaki, traditional savings strategies are faltering in an area of rampant money printing by the Fed and soaring inflation. Your hard-earned savings are losing value faster than ever. And that stable job we're all after? Well, Kiyosaki argues it's far from secure. It's a risky bet in any unpredictable economic landscape. And the big shocker, owning a house isn't the asset we've been led to believe. Instead, it's a liability in disguise. The real clincher is the myth of diversification. What's often sold as smart investing might not be so smart after all. And here's where Kiyosaki challenges one of the biggest financial taboos, the fear of debt. It's a belief deeply ingrained in our mindset, thanks to the poor dad philosophy. But Kiyosaki wants us to see beyond this. Understanding good versus bad debt is crucial. It all boils down to knowing your assets from your liabilities. There's good debt and bad debt. Again, it goes back to the financial statement, income, expense, asset, liability. So debt falls in here. So if you, let's say I'm gonna buy, you know, everybody says I'm gonna buy a house. Everybody says my house is an asset. 
That's not true. Your house is a liability. I don't care if you have no debt on it or not. A house is a liability. Same as if you have a car. A car is a liability. And the reason for that is, as we talked about earlier, the six words that are basics of financial education, financial intelligence income expense, asset liability, and the two other words are cash flow. So when you look at the average person, they have a job, money comes in here, they pay for their house, and the money goes to a bank through a mortgage. So it's not an asset because the cash is flying, flowing out, so it's a liability. So the definition of liability does it take money from your pocket? And for an asset, does it put money in your pocket? So when I have a rental property here, it puts money in my pocket. So if I live in the house, it's a liability because even if I have no debt on it, I still have taxes, depreciation, repairs, and upkeep, insurance, and all this. When I rent a property, I've done a good job buying it and structuring it. Every month, it sends me money. So I started off when I was 25, I had a little one bedroom condo and it put 25 bucks in my pocket. It was a start. So this was good debt. You see, I, this, the debt also went out and paid, but it also put $25 in my pocket. So net, net, I was making money from my little house. So today, my wife and I own 6,500 of them. And every month, 6,500 houses put money in my pocket. My, my people who live in them love me and all this because they have a place to live. But all of this comes from debt. Let's turn the clock back to the Great Recession, which showcased the vast divide in how the rich and the poor perceive debt. When panic was in the air and most folks clutched their wallets tight, fearing the worst, the financially savvy were playing a different game altogether. They were raking in money and, believe it or not, borrowing even more. But why? The answer lies in a perfect storm of opportunity, historically low interest rates and assets going for a steal. The financially astute saw this as their moment. They borrowed at these laughably low rates to snap up assets that didn't just cover their debts but also brought in a steady cash flow padding their pockets month after month. Take Robert Kiyosaki and his rich dad real estate advisor, Ken McElroy. They weren't just sitting on the sidelines, they were actively scooping up multifamily properties in prime markets. Thanks to Freddie and Fannie loans being readily available, the government was all for investors providing affordable housing. They bagged top-notch properties at basement prices using cheap debt. Now let's fast forward. Over a decade later, most of these properties have been sold for multiples of their purchase price. Kiyosaki and McElroy are now funneling that wealth into even bigger ventures. So while most were running scared from debt, equating it with financial doom, and others were sinking under the weight of bad debt, thanks subprime mortgages and houses masquerading as assets, Robert was doubling down on good debt. His strategy? Leverage it to build wealth. Number 2. Find Mentors Finding the right mentors and role models is the next key to unlocking success. Have you ever wondered why some people skyrocket in their careers while others trudge along? Kiyosaki highlights the secret ingredient, mentorship. The, my Sunday school teacher was a young, pretty woman, you know, and she said, I'm like nine. And she goes, why were the three wise men wise, you know? I go, because they were rich. You know, they gave they gave they gave the swaddling Jesus gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So they have to be rich guys, I said. And they know commodities as well. Yeah, yeah, good idea. And she goes, No, no, that's not it. So, well, well, they had gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Well, that's not it. So why were they wise? And I went, I don't know. She says, What made them wise was they always sought the best teacher. And she says, If you're going to be a successful in your life. You've got to find the best teachers.
He's emphatic about choosing your mentor wisely. It's not just about finding someone who talks a good game. Your mentor should be a trailblazer in the field you're passionate about. They've walked the walk, not just talked the talk. These people have not only dreamed big, but have also turned those dreams into a reality. Kiyosaki draws a clear line between a mentor and an advisor. A mentor has been in the trenches, navigated the ups and downs, and emerged victorious. An advisor, on the other hand, might know the theory but hasn't necessarily lived it. It's the difference between learning from someone who's read about mountain climbing and someone who's actually scaled Everest. Why is this so important? Research backs it up. Having a mentor sharpens your skills, boosts your job satisfaction, and propels your career forward. However, over half the people out there don't have a mentor. So, how do you find this game-changing mentor? Start by tapping into your network. Look for someone who embodies the success you aspire to. Begin with an informational interview to gauge the fit. If the chemistry is right, set clear goals for what you want to achieve with their guidance. By learning from their victories and setbacks, you gain invaluable insights that can catapult you to heights you've only dreamed of. So, if you're serious about success, take a page out of Kiyosaki's book. Find yourself a mentor who can illuminate your path to your goals. And number one, don't work for money. Well, when I make a million bucks, I keep a million bucks. And the reason is because I don't make it by working for money. See, if you work for money, you're taxed. So that's why lesson number one in Rich Dad Poor Dad is the rich don't work for money. What we do instead is we create businesses as entrepreneurs. We acquire real estate. One of the most game-changing concepts from Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Poor Dad that turns traditional financial wisdom on its head is that the rich don't work for money in the usual sense. It's a principle that might sound bizarre initially, but lies at the heart of Kiyosaki's financial teachings, reshaping how countless people view wealth and financial independence. Kiyosaki breaks it down for us. The rich operate on a different wavelength than the poor or middle class. They're not just chasing paychecks. They're masters of their internal economy, philosophies, and finances. They don't play the blame game with external factors. Instead, they're architects of their financial destiny. Here's the real kicker. The rich don't work for money. They work to build and acquire assets. This mindset is crucial in a world grappling with globalization and its challenges. While many reel from the potential dangers, the wealthy see a playground of opportunities. Economic crises? They're ripe for snapping undervalued assets, launching new ventures, and investing in cutting-edge innovations. Conversely, those struggling financially often worsen their situation by accumulating debt and liabilities. He advises, work to learn, not to earn. This is his mantra. When he lost his last paycheck, it was more than a financial blow. It was the catalyst for an entrepreneurial transformation a crash course in business, investing, and finance. The pursuit of a paycheck can blind us to the real wealth-building tool, financial intelligence. As Kiyosaki puts it, fear of losing money often stops people from making money. Instead, we should focus on acquiring experience and honing skills, not just keeping that paycheck coming. Most people clock in over 40 hours weekly chasing salaries. They splurge on fleeting pleasures or stash their cash in conservative savings. Sure, it's a path to stability, but not to richness. And relying on a pension for future financial security? That's a risky bet. Kiyosaki's counterintuitive lesson is clear. The rich don't build their fortunes on salaries alone. They get rich by owning things. A glance at the Forbes billionaire list confirms it. No one made it there solely on a salary. So now, what's the one key lesson from Robert Kiyosaki that resonated with you the most as we wrap up? And well, how will you apply this knowledge to change your financial game in 2024? Share your thoughts in the comments below and let's continue this conversation.